Oh no, guys, look out! It's a default RPG Maker battle. Huh. A couple of weeks ago, I made a video talking about how to use sprites other than the default RPG Maker ones. And the most common question on that video was, well, what about battle sprites? The plugin that I showed off to change your normal sprites doesn't work for battle sprites because, you know, they're two different types of sprites on two different scenes and they're just really different. So let's talk upgrading your battle sprites. By default, RPG Maker MV and MZ's battle sprites look a little something like this. There are 18 poses, each with three frames of animation, laid out in a grid three wide by six tall. By the way, that image that I just used is from a thread with a lot of templates and guidelines that are super useful. Now, while the default RPG Maker battle sheet isn't bad, I'd like to be able to customize it, use my own poses, use more than just three frames of animation. And there are a few ways that we can accomplish this. First of all, there are paid plugins out there that I'm sure are very easy to use and super customizable and will do exactly what you want and are awesome, but I don't have any money. So let's look at some free ways to change our battle sprites. By the way, some of you guys get testy when I make tutorials for MV instead of MZ. But the thing is, I use MV. There are many more free plugins, assets, etc available for MV than there are for MZ. MZ has a lot of quality of life features, but MV has less paywalls. Stuff for MZ often has lots of documentation, tutorials, at the very least really clear and easy to follow help files. It's really awesome how we're trending towards user friendliness. So let's actually start with MZ. The way I recommend to customize your battle sprite sheets in RPG Maker MZ is using the Akea Animated Battle System plugin. But I'm not going to give a full tutorial on it because it really doesn't need it. This plugin already has an in-depth tutorial that's easy to follow that tells you exactly how to set everything up and exactly what the plugin is capable of. And better yet, there's even a demo file in collaboration with Holder, who makes really awesome battle sprites, by the way, where everything is literally entirely set up for you. So getting this system working for your needs is about as user-friendly as it could be. I've got all of the relevant links for Akea's animated battle system in the description below. So if you're an MZ user, go ahead and start implementing custom battle sprites right now. If you're an MV user, it's a little bit less user-friendly, but you're probably already used to that. So tutorial time. Actually, now that I think about it, I kind of wonder if Akea's animated battle system works on MV too. So, back in the day, there were two major ways to customize your battle sprites for free. You could use the Yanfly plugin suite, or you could use Victor Engine. It's kind of weird because both Yanfly and Victor Engine have these like large suite of plugins, and a lot of them do kind of the same thing. But Yanfly plugins are no longer free, and Victor Engine is, so Victor Engine it is. Also, super important, you've got to pick one or the other. You can't use both Victor Engine plugins and Yanfly plugins because, like I mentioned, they do a lot of the same things and they do them in different ways. I personally use the Victor Engine suite for my battle system. The plugin that we're actually going to use to change up our battle sprites is Victor Engine's Battler Graphics Setup. To get this plugin to work, you also need the Victor Engine Core plugin too. So go ahead and download both and throw them into your plugin manager. I'm also going to grab Battle Motions, but I won't use that right away. Ever since looking at that demo file earlier, I keep thinking about Holder's Animated Battlers. So I'm going to download her Free Heroes Animated Battler set. One thing of note, when it comes to setting up visual weapon graphics, there are a couple of ways you could do it, but it's not built into the plugin by default. So for now, let's just bake our weapon image into the sprite itself. If you download the free holder sprites like I'm using here, there's some documentation that shows which weapons go with which sprites. I'm just gonna pick one that looks cool and edit the image so that the weapon is part of the sprite image. Then we'll export the image as a PNG into our SV underscore actors folder. And this plugin has a certain naming convention that you have to follow. 
this sprite's name is apparently Rose, so we'll leave that. And then within square brackets, we're going to add some information. First is how many frames each pose or motion uses. Holder battlers use four frames of animation, so we'll put that and then a comma. Now how many poses do we have? Well, counting up, Holder has 14 poses. Next is how many columns there are. Now, this isn't going to be columns of frames, but instead columns of full poses. Holder only has one column, and to be honest, I think that that's the easiest way to do it. Next, we can adjust the position along the y-axis of our battler. I don't want to do that, I'm just going to leave it at zero. And finally, we can decide whether or not to show the default little weapon image that comes with RPG Maker. I don't want those, so I'm going to write false. Close our bracket and then save the image, and we can move on to the next step. So this plugin heavily relies on note tags. You set up all of your poses through note tags. There's a blank template note tag in the help file, so I'm just going to copy and paste that into my actor's note tag box, and then we'll adjust it. First, where it says file name, go ahead and put the name of our image. So that would be rose and then all that extra stuff. And then you're going to go through and change all of your values. I like to start by setting every single index. An index basically is picking the pose you want to use for that particular motion. So for idle, I want to use this pose up here at the very top. So that would be index one. You can also reuse the same pose for multiple motions. So go through, count your poses, and pick the corresponding number for every motion. Once I've updated all of my indexes, then I'm going to go in and adjust the loop. So there are three options for loop. You can either use true to, yes, loop the animation over and over and over again. Putting false here, just place the animation once and then switches back to idle. Putting the word once, plays the animation once and then stops on the last frame of the animation and keeps that until the skill using the pose is done. Then you can set the speed that everything will play at. 12 is default, so I like to just set everything to 12 and then adjust later. There's some optional settings too, like frames. You can set if you're going to use less than the max frames. So you know how Holder is using four frames of animation? If you wanted something to be only one frame, like the dead animation, you could set that here. Just add frames one. Direction is only if you're using a character sprite image for your battler. Though, I've never done that, so I'm I'm not the one to ask on how to do that. And once we've finished, here's our result. Already pretty awesome. But now that we have such an animated actor battler, those bats look so dead. They're dead, they're just dead. Dead and lifeless. Luckily, the battler graphic setup can be used to set up enemy sprites as well. For our enemy sprites, I'll show off another spriter. This is Hidden One, who, oh my god, makes the coolest battlers ever. I'll just download a bat sprite. And you can see that these sprite sheets are set up using the same default layout that RPG Maker battler graphics have. So we'll save the sprite sheet into our SV enemies folder this time, and we're going to name it a little bit differently. So this is going to be bat, and then within our brackets, we are going to do three frames of animation, 18 poses, and there are three columns of the poses. Again, I don't want to adjust it, so zero, and then I put true just on muscle memory. It should have been false because this bat doesn't use weapons, but I'm so used to regular RPG Maker sprites using weapons that I put true. Oopsie. Now we're going to open up the enemies tab in the database and we're going to change the graphic of our bat to our bat sprite sheet. Go ahead and set up your note tags again. Obviously you're going to set each index with this sprite in mind now. And then go back to your plugin manager and make sure that your enemy sprite mode is set to animated. By the way, you can set up a lot of defaults here from the plugin manager, which is super convenient. And now we have little animated bat guys. Cute! Now, this is truly not the point of this video, so I won't go into a lot of detail, but you see how we just kind of step forward and then attack from across the field? I'd like to be able to run up to the bat and smack him in the face. 
That's why we downloaded the Victor Engine Battle Motions plugin. If you've heard of the Yanfly or Visual Stella Action Sequences plugins, this is very similar to that. So let's add it to the plugin manager and then mess with a few more note tags. First, I'm going to adjust my attack skill. Since, again, battle motions isn't the point of this video, I'm just going to copy and paste a note tag from my game. I'll put it in the description if YouTube lets me. This note tag is going to make it to where our little actor runs over to the enemy, hits them, and then runs back home. Now, because of some x-axis stuff, if we just let our bats attack, what they're going to do if they're using this attack is run to the right of our actors and hit them like there, which is wrong. We don't want that. So a little bit of game design advice. Your enemies should probably be using their own attack skills and not just using the same attack that your actors can use. Even if numbers wise, it's just a very basic attack, just by giving it its own name, its own motion, it makes everything a lot more interesting. For now, I'll just set up a really simple enemy attack as a placeholder. Yay! And now battles are more interesting. There's actually so much you can do with these plugins beyond what I'm showing here. If this looks interesting to you, I highly recommend downloading and playing around with it because it's awesome. But anyway, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and let me know what you think about this plugin. Is this something that you would want to use? If you have a different tutorial that you would like to see, go ahead and ask in the comments. If I know how to do it, I'll totally tell you. There's also an email in the description where you can ask me questions that are a little bit more complicated or send me your game to play. What else? Ugh, outros are always so annoying. Oh, the, the YouTube, the YouTube buttons. Please subscribe and like and or dislike. I don't care. Press YouTube buttons. Bye.